Morning, friends. Merry Christmas. I'm glad to be with you today, whether it's morning or afternoon or evening. We're glad to be able to gather together with you virtually as we worship together on this Christmas day. I bring you greetings from Palmasia because I know some of you may be viewing this from places far away and we give thanks for your presence. I'm joined in worship today by Rick McClintock and Macy McClintock and we are grateful and considered a blessing in our lives to be able to join together with you through this virtual means on Christmas day. We know that uh, it's been a different world and gathering together on Christmas day virtually is different than what we would have potentially hoped for or expected, but we're glad to be with you in worship today. And we uh, invite you to join us initially as we begin with an opening prayer. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we come before you with joy as we celebrate the birth of your son. We come before you with thanksgiving for all that we have received. We come before you with hope for our future and for the world. As we come before you, help us to release the distractions of wrong priorities, pride, and world events. Help us to focus on the true meaning of the birth of a baby in a manger. We know that you are wonderful counselor, the mighty God, the everlasting father and the Prince of Peace. Guide us to be your disciples in the world, bringing forth your messages of hope and joy and promise and peace and love in the world. Help us to be agents of change in the world, bringing forth your message that we should love one another and help us to live the message of Christmas each day of the year ahead and to share it with others. Amen. Let us dream, merry gentlemen, let nothing you dismay. Remember Christ our Savior, born on Christmas Day. To save us all from Satan's power, we would go astray. No tidings of comfort and joy, comfort and joy. The first reading comes from Luke chapter 2, verses 8 to 20. In that region, there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child, and all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, as it had been told them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Friends, as part of worship, we have the opportunity to act with faithfulness in the offering of a portion of what we have received in the form of our tithes and our offerings. As we worship virtually, we 
can also do that virtually by going to the Palmacia webpage that I will share on the screen during Rick's offertory. The second reading comes from Isaiah chapter 9, verses 2 to 3 and 6 to 7. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders. And he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Macy, for your reading. Friends, Pray with me briefly. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Our Old Testament text for today comes from the book of Isaiah, from the 11th chapter, verses 6 through 10. The wolf shall live with the lamb, the leopard shall lie down with the kid, the calf and the lion and the faltering together and a little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze. Their young shall lie down together and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. The nursing child shall play over the hole of the asp and the weaned child shall put its hand on the adder's den. They will not hurt or destroy on all my holy mountain for the earth will be full of the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. On that day, the root of Jesse shall stand as a signal to the peoples. The nation shall inquire of him, and his dwelling shall be glorious. Friends, this too is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Well, Merry Christmas. We made it. <laughs> we made it here to Christmas Day. Some of us were wondering about that, but we're still gathered together, although it's different here on Christmas Day. We made it. We moved through Advent with the promises of hope and peace and joy and love. We've dealt with themes of anticipation and prophecy and promise and new birth. We lit each of the four Advent candles, and today the Christ candle shines brightly in our Advent wreath. We gather we gather to celebrate the birth of the Messiah, Jesus Christ. The reality of the birth of the Messiah was not an unexpected event. The Old Testament is full of words of the prophets anticipating the coming of a new king with hopefulness. Just listen to the words of Handel's Messiah, where we hear the prophet speaking to us about that which was expected to come. This gift, this gift of the Messiah that we've received and that we celebrate again today is the fulfillment of God's promise to humankind. As a result of that gift, we're called upon individually to act with faithfulness in our own lives. 
2020 has certainly been a test of our ability to do that, hasn't it? Our ability to act faithfulness. Almost every day we've had our doubts about that, of just how faithful we could continue to be. It's been an interesting year. There's no denying that. Throughout the verses that you have heard during the previous weeks of Advent were reoccurring messages of faithfulness. Those messages of faithfulness provide a guide for us of how we are called to live our lives as a demonstration of our acceptance, our acceptance of and our belief in the Christmas story. Faithfulness can be hard work though, can't it? It's been hard work for all of us this year. It's been hard work for me. We want to be faithful, but sometimes that just isn't easy. That's the reality. It can be complicated, but the Christmas message that we can take with us throughout the year, not just today on Christmas Day, is that we are called to live our lives in faith. The events of the year have tested that faith in all of us. As we've read through the text this year, I have continually found myself being brought back to the message that we find throughout the text, both in the Old Testament and in the New Testament, a clear message of be not afraid. It's a message throughout the Christmas story. It's a message that is provided most often by angels. Angels speaking to people who have the need to hear the words, to hear the message of be not afraid in their lives. It's a message to a faithful young Mary and to her cousin Elizabeth. It's a message to a trusting man named Joseph. It's a message to shepherds keeping watch over their flock by night to three kings or magi, and ultimately it's a message of faith that was delivered to a mother and father fleeing with their baby, seeking safety in another place, a message of be not afraid. Be not afraid. It's the Christmas message for us as we gather together. In the words from Isaiah that we read the prophet Isaiah was talking to the people about what was to come. He was delivering a message about the coming of the Messiah, exactly what that would mean to the world. We know the answer to that question today with the benefit of Scripture. We know that the Messiah is Jesus Christ. The message is that with the coming of the Messiah, the world would be different. The unexpected would become the expected. What seems impossible would come to be, and the Messiah would come as a signal to the people that it will be all right. And it will be all right. That's the promise of the Christmas message. The promise of the message is that it will be all right. We're called upon this Christmas day to be reminded of the birth of the Messiah and what it means in our lives and what it means in the world. We're called upon to accept the celebration of the birth as a moment of renewal of faith again in our lives. We're called upon to receive again the gift of that birth. Look for the signs of the birth of that baby in your life. Look for where you can find the true message of faith today right now at this moment, throughout this Christmas day, and going into the year that's ahead of us, where can you find that message, that message of promise, of hope, of joy, of love? Throughout the verses that you have heard during the previous weeks of Advent, there were reoccurring messages of faithfulness. They provide a guide for us of how we are called to live our lives as a demonstration of acceptance of and belief in the Christmas story. Faithfulness can be hard work. I acknowledge that. It just can be. We want to be faithful, but sometimes that just isn't easy. 
Sometimes it's not. It can be complicated, but the Christmas message that we can take with us throughout the year, not just today on Christmas Day, is that we are called to live our lives in faith. The events of this year have tested that faith in all of us, but we have the opportunity to live in that faith, faith and be not afraid. As we have read through the text this year, I have continually found myself thinking about that reoccurring of message that it will be all right. It's that promise in each of our lives as we look forward to the year ahead. Look with eyes of wonderment to the future, like the wonderment of the children in our lives as they were awaiting the arrival of Santa. Look for the signs of hope in the world. And as you look, remember that feeling of anticipation of what it is that was to come. But as you wait, be not afraid of what is coming in your lives. And as you wait, do this. As you receive the gift of the birth of that baby in your life, give love to one another as the gift of Christmas. Love one another as that baby born in a barn loved and still love you. Merry Christmas. Gotta sing along with this one. Go tell it on the mountain Over the hills and everywhere Go tell it on the mountain That Jesus Christ is While shepherds get there watching Go silent thoughts by night We hope that the heavens They're shown Friends, as we leave each other from this virtual space, let me ask a blessing upon you as we go. In the week ahead, push out the chaos of Christmas and the world. Remember the true reason for the Christmas season, a young faithful woman, the trusting man to whom she was promised to be married, and a tiny newborn baby born in a barn and lying in a manger. Prince of Peace, King of Kings and Lord of Lord. And just as that baby brought light into the world for us all, I invite you, each of you, literally, I invite each of you to go into the world this Christmas day and throughout the year and into next year and bring light where there's darkness for others. Because in this world today, especially today, need is great, and therefore opportunity is great. Leave this worship time together, committed to be a symbol of peace and hope and love in the world. And as you go from this place, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious upon you. May the Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace now and forever. Hallelujah. Amen. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas.